That was kind of loud. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of your weekly FGC podcast, allegedly. Uh, best of five. <laughs> I am Elon. That's me right there. And I'm joined by the main squeeze, Ace King Offsuit Jerk. I'm never getting rid of that name, am I? Nope. Look, it's a, you know what's funny? Uh, so at work, I've been doing some Brazilian or Portuguese translating. Wow, I'm, I am becoming American. Jeez. Uh, some Portuguese translating. And in, like, I always wondered why I like giving people nicknames. And now that I'm, like, going back to my roots in, Bra- in Brazil, like, that's a cultural thing. Everybody has a nickname. And so, like, a term yeah. of endearment type of thing. So, but anyway, Steve, I know you wanted to get something off of your chest. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the floor. And I'm going to mute myself. So you, you roll on in. Okay. So, um, as you may or may not know, I live in Minneapolis. We've had a little bit of craziness in Minneapolis uh, this past year, and it is focused on the death of George Floyd, uh, the murder of George Floyd by a police officer who was convicted today uh, of three separate counts in in, uh, association with that murder. I've seen people celebrating, and I'm not going to tell people how to feel about this because I feel about 55, 60 different ways about everything that's happened. For me, this is not a day of celebration. Uh, This is not us, something we should be patting ourselves on the back for. Um, We should not celebrate clearing the lowest bar humanly possible. George Floyd is not a martyr. He's not a hero. He's a guy who should still be alive today. And he's not because our system failed. Today is not a celebration of the success of the system because the system failed long before this point. Today is not a celebration of the end of a great challenge because that challenge began long before George Floyd. It's going to continue long after George Floyd. And it's not something that we should forget, but it's something we will forget because that is something that we as a people are good at. We we put out the little fire. Uh, We do the bare minimum to, to put out the little fire that we set and then we move on to the next thing. And I hope that's, I hope against hope that we don't just move on from this. So, um, all that said, my heart isn't exactly in fighting games right this minute. So if I don't have my normal energy, I apologize. I would love to be coming at you today doing jokes about today being 420. I would love to be coming at you today with jokes about the European Super League and tying that into ESL. Um, I would love to be doing all of that, but, and I still might do it. Um, It's just today is a day where I've got a lot on my heart right now, and I shouldn't have to. (laughs) This shouldn't be happening. This shouldn't be something we go through over and over and over and over and over and over again, but it is. So, so yeah, that's where I'm at. Sorry for kind of bringing the mood down right now. Um, I love you guys. I love you girls. I love you people. Love each other. Be excellent to each other. And yeah, let's talk about fighting games a little bit. I think I speak for everybody. When I say, Steve, you in any capacity is a benefit to our days. So never apologize for not being 100% you because that's impossible for everybody. You know what? I I, I get that this is a moment of showing love for each other, but let's not say things we we can't take back later. Like, I don't improve the day for everybody just by my mere appearance. Yeah, you do. Like, I'm sort of... like. I do my thing, 
And hopefully I do my thing okay. And sometimes I don't do my thing okay. And that's fine. You know why? Because you're you, Steve. And I'm me. I, and we are best of five. There, <laughs> we are... There's apparently a rule that all three of us can no longer be on the show at the same time. I know. I finally come back, and now you you went missing. Now Sharpie's missing. Shar- Sharpie was here last week, and like, <laughs> like that happened to be the the day that all the sh- stuff I almost swore myself. Uh, all the stuff uh, with the shooting of Dante Wright hit mm-hmm. the fan, yeah. and I really didn't feel like I'd be contributing to the show. That's that. That's the other thing. Like, at while we have a trial for a cop, police officer killing an unarmed black person in Minneapolis, we have another officer killing an unarmed black person just miles away from Minneapolis. What? This doesn't have to be a thing. Why is this a thing? This shouldn't be a thing. All right, I I promise we're going to talk about fighting games. I promise you that. I'm just... Nah, dude. You're right. Woosa, pressure points. Look, Steve, don't (sighs) apologize for being correct. Will you? I don't want to be correct. I know. I really don't. I just want to live my life and go 0-2 at a tournament again (laughs) and not have to worry about anything else. That's all I want. I just... Uh, we'll get there hopefully soon sooner rather than later yeah. my girlfriend sooner. is flashing my, <laughs> my fiance it, this is taking oh, a fiance? while to wait 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 to, a minute yeah wait a minute steve you got wait. engaged and you didn't tell none of us okay. I, it, it, it's you it, realize you just said <laughs> okay okay so i'm getting it from both sides first of all apparently i cut off at saying that she was flashing <laughs> which is not what happened <laughs> not 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 quite she she was flashing me the heart she was flashing me the heart <laughs> Not where her heart is, the actual hand heart. <laughs> we'll talk Ooh. about Shermie later. That's, a, that's, for, that's for later in the show. Ooh. Oh. Anyway, now let's not... All right, first of all, let me be the first on this show to say, Steve, congratulations on your engagement that you didn't tell us about. Chat, let's it, give Steve it's... a big old clap, huh? Congratulations, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Everybody's like, congratulating. Like, like, y'all should congratulate her. She's the one that's got to put up with me. So, well, Shouldn't we be sending her condolences then? Probably. Nah, it's a congratulations, Steve. <laughs> it's a congratulations all around. Happy times. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and... <laughs> Never, I was going to make a joke about the flashing thing, but I think we should just move on at this point. Probably. <laughs> we are on Twitch. Because That's she, not allowed. <laughs> yeah. She also has access to a lot of things that can be thrown. Good. And she good. has pretty good aim. Good. So, good. You'll catch it on the archive. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. That was totes adorbs. I said that earlier before we went live at some point. <laughs> Steve, too hot for Twitch. Jerick. Now the main oh. squeeze has, diff- has a different meaning. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all Let's right. get to we, the actual fighting show. Games. <laughs> fighting games actually happened. Hit it up, Steve. Do oh. the recap, will you? <laughs> Man. All right. Let's, let's do this recap because... Obviously, there are always events that happen every weekend, but there was one in particular today. It's been a while since we've had one of these, and that was a CPT event. Street Fighter V, the Capcom Pro Tour, is back in action. It kicked off with the first of four Japanese events on the circuit 
with the winner automatically qualifying to Capcom Cup, and that winner was Mago. Five or six months early than a lot of people might have expected, but Mago beat Tokido twice, uh, once in the winner's final, once in the grand final, both by three to one margins, uh, to secure his place in Capcom Cup 8, aka Capcom Cup 2021, which will probably take place in 2022. Uh, you see Tokido, Momochi, and Kawano rounding out the top four. Itazan and John Takeuchi uh, tying for fifth. Daigo and Fudo, the Beast teammates, uh, rounding out the top eight. Did you catch any of this? I unfortunately didn't. But damn, Mago being up on the top again, it's been a hot minute. Well, yeah, Mago, Mago's been on a bit of a roll. Um, obviously it's a little different format last year, uh, mm -hmm. with having two tournaments, you, it's one winner from each and then nobody else gets in. Uh, but yeah, Mago has, it, it's funny cause he, they actually did an interview. It was, uh, James Chen and Vicious who were on the call and they did an interview with him right after he won through an interpreter. And he actually talked about the September Mago thing mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, it, it, it hit me because he talked about wanting to quit uh, mm -hmm. being a, a player in general. Uh, we actually have that quote from that interview. He said, quote, I've always been more of a slow starter. That's why I got called September Mago two years ago. I hit the bottom. I was really, really struggling. I even thought about quitting being a pro gamer. At that time, I reworked on my mental side of it and also the technical side of it. Then I came from the bottom and rebounded. And ever since, I've started to be uh, started being more consistent. From now on, I don't want to be September Mago. I want to be all day Mago. End quote. Dude, if we were at a, an event, you, uh, I'm 100% certain that everybody would be chanting all day Mago. Oh, I, I Mago, yeah, absolutely. Oh, they, Mago. Mago is, you know, the thing that's tr that I saw, um, which really kind of threw me. You know, we talk about all of this old, all of these young players coming up. Uh, Knuckle do before he retired. Men R D, um, just all this youth coming into Street Fighter Five. The average age was somewhere around 34, 35 in this top eight. You got Daigo, who's around my age. Mago's 36. Mm -hmm. um, Tokido is in his mid-30s as well. This isn't exactly an... It, it, it's not a game that's just for new players. There's obviously still room for the vets to come through. And, yeah, it, it, it's heartening to see when you're maybe not for some of our younger viewers for someone like me like yeah come on let's go middle age guys let's do it dude uh it's like sleeping master in our chat said it's no country for young men <laughs> okay that's a good hey, one there might be central america or uh uh the next cpt event is going to be the central american you'll probably see some some young guns do well there but it is definitely good to see once in a while this, this sort of, and it's not just the old players, it's the established players too, because mm -hmm. we've had this conversation before about online and, you know, how it, there's this disconnect between being a good online player and being a good offline player. Well, are we really saying Daigo isn't good online? Are we really saying Mago, when you got a grand final of Mago and Tokido, and you've got players like Di like Daigo in there, like Itazan, like uh, Fudo, Momochi. Those are just solid players. Being a solid player offline does translate to being a solid player online, even yeah. under slightly different circumstances. Remember when I said that at the beginning of the pandemic when we were getting some online tournaments and people were like, online sucks, blah, blah, blah. Everything's going to be different. I hate to say I told you so, but... No, actually, I don't hate to say it, but I told you so. You love to say it. You love to say it. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Sure do. 
I sure be do. Uh, but no, that's super exciting, man. It, I, I'm really sad I haven't, uh, I haven't, I wasn't able to watch it over the weekend. Uh, I am hoping to go back and watch some highlights when those come out, if those come out. But yeah, uh, and somebody in the chat was mentioning this. I was actually just thinking about it when I was looking at the results screen. It feels like an old school, like, Mad Cat's top eight. <laughs> MCZ Mago, MCC Daigo. <laughs> The keto. <laughs> Who Mochi? was it? Was it Fire Liger? Fire Liger being the, in there in the background in in the full <laughs> yep. costume. Yeah, and uh, like the, the the great part about Fire Liger is uh, they don't they didn't work for Mad Cats. <laughs> as far as I know, they weren't hired by Mad Cats. <laughs> for some reason, that makes perfect sense because I can just like someone's like. You know, there is a segment of our community that, if given the opportunity to dress up as an animal and be on stage for a top eight, they would sign on the data line before even there was even an offer of a paycheck. Mm -hmm. So, so that does not surprise me at all. No, and look, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm like pretty certain I heard that. They were not hired by Mad Cats. It's something that could be completely wrong, but I want to believe it, so I am going to believe it. <laughs> and that's something we could do now in 2021. We yep. we, we get to pick the truth we uh, accept. I, I feel like we're dangerously close to going down a slippery slope that's going to delve into stuff that's outside the FGC. <laughs> so hey, uh... <laughs> it's it's been. It's been a year, man. It, yeah, this, I'm with you. Dude. This has been a year, so I, I let me have my freebie. Okay, go All for right, it. Let me have my freebie. Go for it. Speak the truth. No, no, oh, okay. no. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm taking my freebie now. Oh, okay. All right. I'm just saying there may be a freebie in the future. Okay. All yours. And you, I, you I, I don't have anybody over here flashing me right now to calm <laughs> me down. <laughs> You're, uh, you've earned it, and uh, it's weird for me to say that you've earned something on a show that you've been on longer than I have, but you've earned it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. But, but so Steve, we talked of oh, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. You were going to do the no, same no, thing you, I was going to do. Oh, you you do the you do the thing. Oh, you do the I, thing. I was just going to say, Steve, we can we can keep thinking about what happened over the weekend at CPT and reminisce on the Mad Cats top eight that was, but. What about this weekend? Well, we got a few events to look forward to this weekend. Uh, the return of the graphic, because we've got a couple of Dang. big events. It's, yeah. Look, I have been missing this graphic, but more than that, I have been missing seeing an event with like a billion streams. So, yes, the 2021 World Serpent Championship. This is an online event for uh, Blaze Blue Central Fiction. Uh, that is a capital I, by the way, in fiction, not a lowercase L. Welcome to my uh, hell. So I, I spelled it correctly. Uh, but that's going to take place uh, this weekend across all of those streams you see on screen. Uh, if you want it, it's going to be regional competition all over the world. I know Asia is represented, North America, Europe. So if you have any sort of interest in uh, BBCF, check out those streams this weekend. Uh, Chick Zom is going to have a few of them. Uh, so if you only follow one, that's probably the one to follow. Uh, but all of those others will have great action on for you as well. Uh, also this weekend... Event number seven for the Intercontinental Combat in the uh, MK11 Pro League. We're getting towards the end of that. There's eight rounds per region, and we're already at round seven. So uh, we're get we're getting to it. We're getting to that uh, last point. And then also this weekend, uh, we had the qualifiers last week, and I really wish Sharpie was on to talk about it. Uh, but the spring blockbuster for the Skullgirls Championship Series, the first big event of that new Skullgirls circuit. Uh, they had the qualifiers this past weekend. Now on Saturday, we're going to get it all the way down to the finals, to the last person standing. Who's going to take home that big chunk of points? And that big chunk of money. Yes, big chunk of money for top four. 
uh, I did see a super cool clip of Sonic Fox doing what looked like a touch of death, but I'm sure there were like a reset or there was like a reset or two in it. And uh, Sharpie and the other commentator, who I'm sorry, I don't know their name, uh, were just losing their minds over. And I was like, hey, Skullgirls is back. Sweet. Not that it ever left, but I'm just, it, it's back on my timeline, which I enjoy. So maybe I should put more Skullgirls on my timeline on Twitter. Well, that is going to be a, an option for you, especially this weekend. So, uh, Skullgirls GG. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit more about Street Fighter? Oh, absolutely. Quick? Absolutely. What do you want to say about uh, Street Fighter? Well, I don't know if you got a chance to watch it, um, but it was really interesting to see they actually played on different stages for the top eight. It wasn't just the grid. Mm -hmm. Or was it? Boy, this is a story that has so many mixed feelings. Uh, <laughs> because it's great, but awful at the same time. So it, It's... It, it's yeah. not ideal that they had to go this route, but it is very smart, I will say. So, uh, there is... So, what you saw, uh, if you watched Top 8 this past weekend uh, for the CPT event, and you might not have because it happened, if you live in the U.S., overnight on Friday night and Saturday night. Uh, but they used mods, at least to broadcast the event. So players, um, so, so obviously the grid, a.k.a. the training stage, is the most popular stage because there's the fewest things going on. Uh, there's no slowdown, or at least minimal, minimal slowdown uh, compared to other stages where there are more background elements. Um, players actually played on that, but they... But what Capcom did is they used a mod that allowed you to replace, to play the, the match, uh, to broadcast the match as if it were happening on a different stage. So play, if you were watching the event, you saw them playing on all these different stages. Uh, if you were playing in the, the event, you're just playing on the grid. So in that sense, it was the best of both worlds. What are your thoughts on this? First, shout out to whoever was the genius that came up with that idea. Because that's awesome, right? Bottom line, it's like, hey, everybody's complaining about just watching the dang uh, grid all the time. Somebody finally found a solution. It only took a pandemic for him to find the solution. And the sad thing is, once we go back to offline events, that's not going to be an option. Uh, <laughs> I worry about that. <laughs> uh, but uh, there's, I have so many mixed feelings about this. Because like I said, like, we don't have to look at the grid anymore for eight hours or however long those broadcasts are. It's probably like three, four hours. Great. But why can't Capcom just, you know make those other stages playable or maybe even like no why can't Capcom just make those stages playable you know and I don't think and I don't know if it's like a if it's like a I don't know if it's like as easy as like oh they just need to change the zero to a one on coding or not I'm sure there's yeah. more to it than that yeah we're talking about a game that's five years old at some point, if there was a way to address them that easily, uh, you would imagine that they would have done so by now. Um, you also have to keep in mind that the people involved in the Capcom Pro Tour aren't necessarily the people involved in, with programming the game, uh, right. with deciding where the attention goes in terms of patches. So... They should not, you know, it, it, obviously it's frustrating if the game isn't, if, if these other stages don't work and you can't just pick them out right in, for traditional means, but the backlash for that shouldn't go on the people operating the Capcom Pro Tour. Right. It shouldn't 
go uh, to the people running Capcom social media. You know, there is a disconnect between what what they can do, what they are able to do, and mm-hmm. what we would like them to, what we would like Capcom in general to do. Also, I do want to that- bring up. Sorry, go on, go on, finish your point. No, sorry, no, sorry. you go ahead. You go ahead, please. I wanted, to, I wanted to bring something up because I just thought about this. This isn't a Street Fighter V problem. This has been a Street Fighter problem. And I guess it might just be a modern games problem, right? Because remember uh, Ultra? Did, you, did we ever see the volcano stage? No. So How many stages, how many stages did you ever see in uh, Marvel 3? <laughs> One, maybe yeah. two. <laughs> That stupid Winter Wonderland stage where everybody picked the white versions of the characters. Tron white. Wonderland. <laughs> yeah, Tron Wonderland. Thank you. Yeah, or the grid in Street Fighter IV. Uh, so it's not specifically a Capcom, or not a Capcom, a Street Fighter problem. Or a Street Fighter V problem, sorry. And, and I think what people might not understand, um, if you're someone who plays fighting games a lot and you're used to playing on the grid for those reasons and you don't necessarily care about watching that all the time. If you have an event like an Evo or, uh, you know, Combo Breaker, CEO, anything along those lines, um, there's so many people where that's their introduction to Street Fighter. That's their first time looking at it. And if, and I heard so many times during top eights, like, you know, people who aren't necessarily hardcore fighting game players say, man, are they, is this training stage? Are they just practicing? Like it, it might be grand finals of Evo, but to them, because they're seeing everything happen on the training stage over and over and over again, they were thinking that it was, uh, you know, it, it it didn't seem any different to them than just a couple of guys practicing. So there was a bit of a disconnect between what the situation was, you know, the intensity of the situation, and what some of those newer viewers were picking up. That's a big reason why uh, the the grid was banned from from use in Capcom Pro Tour events. So. The fact that it is an issue that they needed to address, and obviously they didn't address, they're not addressing it the way we would ideally like to, them to address it, but it's still, you know, they should still get props for doing something that helps in terms of, uh, you know, presenting the game to newer players. Yeah, it, like I said, it's a cool innovation that was born out of a necessity. Hey. Big words. Um, but like I said, uh, what's going to happen when we do go back to offline tournaments? Curious to see. Will we will we have to play in an online lobby <laughs> offline? That would be awful. Uh, but I, I just, I think it's a cool innovation and the fact that it was done on a Capcom broadcast. Because if you hadn't told me, like if somebody hadn't told me that they were using this mod, I wouldn't have even thought twice about it. Right? Uh, but the other thing is, if you recall the last time there was a Street Fighter Five mod that got very popular, <laughs> things went south very really fast. Oh no! What? Why are we bringing up those things? Because they're using a mod. Is Capcom gonna patch this mod out too? Who knows? Uh, but yeah. <laughs> but that's not all the Street Fighter we're going to talk about today. Right, Steve? Um, no, it is not. Because if you are, uh, if you watch to the end of the CPT event, you saw a little trailer. And it might be stuff you already see. It might be stuff you haven't seen. Uh, We should probably take a look at that. Yep, we are going to look at that trailer as soon as... There we go. Let's take a look at that trailer, huh? All right, everybody... Just wait, 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 wait. Everybody stop. 
We have to take Stopping. a moment. We have to take a moment to thank the man, the myth, the legend. Well, the, pa- the person, the patron saint, the patron saint of best of five. Die by sword for the resub, 42 months, and all the other hundred gift subs that they have given to us. Die by sword, the only VIP <laughs> in the best in the besties chat. Thank you, Die by Sword, for everything you've done for the show. We appreciate it immensely. There are no words to yeah. there are no words to express the appreciation we have for you. Honestly, if Three it wasn't for Die by Swords. Years. If it wasn't for Die by Sword, we wouldn't have half the emotes we have right now. <laughs> and that's and that's not even like Absolutely. that's not even hyperbole. <laughs> oh man. So thank you, Die by Sword. Uh, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you to everyone who supports us in any way. Whether you subscribe to us, whether you come jump in chat, you retweet us, anything, you know, anything you do helps. It helps motivate us to make this show as good as we possibly can. Uh, Elon just got a new computer. Made a new investment in... Yeah. So hopefully we'll have a little better presentation. Elon's looking sharp, I must say. Yeah, I got a new webcam too. I bought a bunch of new... Sorry, Steve. I bought a bunch of new stuff. Take two. Ready? (laughs) I bought a bunch of new stuff. And you know who else bought something just now is Kwanzai. Just resubscribing... For another month. Thank you, Kwanzai. Another person who's been with us since... 41. Another person who's been with us since the beginning, man. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But I think what Steve was trying to get at is if our voices are reaching your ears at this point, thank you. We appreciate you. We love you. Anything else, Steve, that I forgot? I'm going to flash you the heart. Let's hope Twitch doesn't ban us now. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Kwanzai. Thank you, Die by Sword. Thank you, everybody, for watching, listening. Legit, we appreciate... That mean scene... Oh, boy. It's a, it's a hype train. is happening. The mean scene for eight months... Choo-choo! Chugga-chugga-choo-choo. Mofo. Yeah, I didn't say the other stuff. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Straight up. We really appreciate you. Uh, but anyway... Let's get back to what we were talking about before we were so lovingly interrupted. Is that? Ah, whatever. I guess we're going to just go with what I just said. Uh, here's a trailer. Steve, check this out. I'm checking. We are checking out this trailer that is playing. Dang, and she has a ninja mime costume? Crazy. I, I got to say. I'm, I'm going to say this. Go ahead. Say it, uh, Street Fighter 4, I, I have a soft spot for Street Fighter 4 uh, in terms of the music. Because I, for whatever reason, I know it's bad, but I hate, but I have a soft spot for like that club sort of music. Like, mm-ts, Dude, mm-ts, that mm-ts. Zangief MIDI saxophone? No, it, there's yes. nothing better. There's nothing better. <laughs> There's nothing better. There's nothing better. But Street Fighter V, I really have to say, whatever you think about the game, the music has been top class. Mm. Pretty much across the board. Mm. Mm. You wouldn't agree with me on that? No. Nah. Real There's been some stuff that's cool. Right. There's been some stuff that's not been so cool. But, however, this is a, an opinion base, so go ahead. Please keep going. I'm sorry for rudely interrupting. All right. Has any has any uh, Street Fighter Four track measured up to President of the World? I don't think so. That is a no. A resounding but no. Then again, but then again, those Street Fighter Four tracks have been released. So mm-hmm. That is true. <sighs> one day. One day. It will be, um, it will happen. But yeah, speaking of music, well, well, first of all, do you have any thoughts on Rose? Have you had, I have not, I have not uh, been able to get my hands on her as of yet. Uh, I, I haven't either, but I do have her purchased. I just need to install Street Fighter on my new computer and then I'm going to, but yeah, I've been seeing a lot of tech. 
uh, at first, all I was seeing was people using Soul Satellite and V-Trigger 2, which is the Soul Illusion. It's the, the custom combo version. Uh, and the custom combo version stuff looks so dope. And it's kind of funny that it's so similar to Minot's V-Trigger. Right, because Minot has, she has the six orbs and it gives her a ridiculously extended combo because they found, uh, people found a way of using each one of those orbs at the perfect time. With this, Rose can basically hit someone twice so she has enough uh, hit stun on them to recover from a fierce to then hit them with another fierce or another button. So I find it super interesting that both Minot and Rose have like these V triggers that just give them like a ridiculously large combo. And then, uh, but I recently saw a couple people using Rose's, uh, the teleporting V-Trigger, which is V-Trigger 1, and that stuff looks amazing. Although she can only do it twice, it's like a double Nash. Uh, but she can also, like, teleport, hit someone, teleport, hit him again, land, hit him again, and it's, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. Uh, I, I think oh, yeah. we're gonna see some really wacky stuff. Mm -hmm. With her once, once, uh, once people get some more time with her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, um, but Steve, I want to go back to your discussion about music because while I'm not in love with a lot of the music that is in Street Fighter Five, there are some pieces of music in Street Fighter Five that I adore. Like for example, Karen's Beach theme, great. The New York Holiday theme, wonderful. It's right up my alley. Karen, I, Karen's theme when they first released it, I thought was cool, but I think it's just kind of... Maybe I listened to it too much because I main Karen. I don't know. Uh, but there, like some of the music is cool. It just doesn't see... It just feels like it was one dude who just cut it on like uh, Ableton and then sent it over, and that's what they got. So it's like there's a part of me that's like, ah, I wish there was a little more to it. The jury theme. <laughs> the, the jury theme. Uh, we don't. We don't talk about that one. We look, don't uh, talk about that one. Uh, did you have you seen the meme of uh, of King of the Hill, where Bobby's listening to something and Hank puts on the headphones, and he just like takes it off and he goes, "No son of mine is listening to this stuff." Yeah. I saw somebody put the jury theme on that, and it was so funny. Uh, but anyway, See, but but like. Like for me, the biggest ones, the biggest misses in Street Fighter Four, in my opinion, were Ken and Ryu, mm -hmm. and the fact that that I I feel like they nailed him in Street Fighter Five. So maybe maybe that's coloring my opinion of it. Yeah. But, well, w whether whether you w sorry, finish your sentence. What were you gonna say? No, I was no, gonna... no. I think you're gonna do it better. Okay. I think you're gonna do it better. Whether you like Street Fighter Four music or Street Fighter Five music. I think there's one song that we can all get behind to say that is the greatest song that's ever been created. And unfortunately, we can't play that song because last time I played that song on, uh, on a video, specifically when I was managing Flo's YouTube channel, uh, Flo Rida took it down. So we can't play Indestructible. However, Capcom, taking the nostalgia of Indestructible have provided a ripoff, I mean an arrangement of it for the 2021 CPT season as the official theme song of the 2021 CPT season. I have it set, Steve, I'm just going to play 10 seconds of it. It's going to fall under fair use. We just have to talk over it. Here we go. All right. Hey, folks, it's Ace. Um... At this point of the show, Alon decided to play a little bit of the song, about 15 seconds. I'm not going to play that here because it probably violates copyright, and I don't want us to get sued into oblivion. But yeah, it's uh, Indestructible slash The Next Door. It's a new cover of it. It's pretty much the same song. Uh, those of you watching on YouTube, I'll put the link to the song here. Or here. I don't know where the infographic goes, but yeah, pretty much the same song. All right, back to the show. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't want to stop. <laughs> anyway. We are... So if we get sued into oblivion, this is why. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, what was I going to say? 
Dang, I completely lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, uh, now I remember what I was going to say. Indestructible. No, now That's it's called. You remember. No, now it's called the. The next door. The next door. Thank you. <laughs> that's called because the that's what next was, door. That's... Yeah. <laughs> Open the next door. That's what the Japanese version was. The original Japanese version was. Oh, was it really? Called. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. I don't. I, don't... I had no idea there was I'll, a separate uh... Japanese version to Indestructible. That's crazy. Yeah. So. Or it's called the next door. That's I'll funny. actually link that in chat so you can listen to it. It 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 has nothing to do with Flo Rida. It has That's nothing crazy. to do with anybody. Yeah. That is absolutely crazy. I had no idea. I've just learned something new today. I mean I learn something new every day, but this is what I've learned today. Uh that's crazy. But yeah. you can't help but think or like wonder who made this decision <laughs> to have to just say like eh, just put the next door on there have it just be a weird remix why don't you just get it over with <laughs> well this seems to be the proper week for nostalgia mm -hmm. because uh something i don't know how you know we talk about uh how Street Fighter 4 and the release of that sort of revitalized the FGC. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another game that at least to me doesn't get as much love, even though I feel it was very important as well. What's that? That's Mortal Kombat 9. Mm -hmm. Was that? Yesterday marked. It was yesterday, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yesterday marked the 10 year anniversary Wild. of the release of MK9. Wild. And I feel like, like if you're a Street Fighter player, obviously, Street Fighter Four is a, a huge moment for for you, because what whatever you feel about that game, that game changed the direction of Street Fighter as a series. It brought it back into the forefront for a whole lot of people. And if you're some, if you're a fan of Mortal Kombat, MK9 did the same. So, I don't know. Do you have any sort of thoughts around MK9? Uh, because this has been, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of people reflecting on it. I, I didn't really delve all that much into MK9. I, I kind of came, came back along later, but. Mm -hmm. uh, so, go. before I competitively played Street Fighter. I didn't really like Street Fighter. I was more of an MK put person. Your, put yourself in the in the spot. Don't tell me what to do, Steve. This is my show now. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. It's not. Uh, but before I was a Street Fighter player, uh, I grew up with Mortal Kombat. I had Mortal Kombat 2 on my Sega Genesis. I would play my dad. And then I got better than my dad, and I would beat him up. And my dad stopped playing video games because he couldn't bear the thought of his own son being better than he was at Mortal Kombat 2 on the Sega Genesis. Played Mortal Kombat 3. And then every time I saw Mortal Kombat, I would get it. However, the 3D Mortal Kombat's, while they were fun games for what they were, I wasn't as in love with them as I was with Mortal Kombat 2 or Mortal Kombat 3. And... I don't know if it was because the game was in 3D. I don't know if it was because the games were too vastly different. I don't know if it's because I was growing and changing opinions and my brain was changing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But when I saw Mortal Kombat 9 and the fact that even in the story they were just like, yeah, never mind. <laughs> For all those 3D games, I was like, all right. And I played the absolute heck out of Mortal Kombat 9. I'm talking like... I would spend hours and hours and hours and hours like just playing through the story mode or playing through the arcade mode. I even played online a lot. I won some matches online, which I wasn't fun or I wasn't good at uh, fighting games at the time. So it's a miracle that I even understood how to do stuff. Kratos was in the game. It was awesome. I, I don't know, man. I was a big fan of Mortal Kombat 9. I think it was one of those things where the the people 
working on Mortal Kombat were like, they looked at where the games were going and where they came from and decided to just do a complete turnaround and just try something different. And I think it paid off dividends because that game was amazing. And the fact that it went back to that 2D world, I thought was great. And they've since been pushing the boundaries of what 2D fighters can look like. So I'm a big fan, I think. Uh, and uh, I, man, there's been so many, I have so many good memories with Street Fighter, or I'm sorry, with Mortal Kombat 9. Uh, I specifically remember a buddy of mine, his name is Chase, who now is a game developer. Uh, whenever he'd come over, we'd play Mortal Kombat 9. He always picked Liu Kang, and he would just do the nunchuck move, and I didn't know how to deal with it because I didn't play fighting games competitively. And I thought it was an infinite, so I was just like, come on, man, you're not even letting me play. What the hell? I vividly remember being very frustrated at that because I didn't understand the concept of whiff punishing. But uh, very, very good memories with Mortal Kombat 9, man. It's crazy. And it's crazy that it's been 10 years. Yeah, I mean... That's been 10 years. Street Fighter 4 has been 12 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're coming up on 10 years for uh, Marvel 3. Mm -hmm. When when was that released? 20... Oh, we're past. That was a couple months ago. That that was 10 years. Wow, we're getting old, Steve. So, yeah, remember when 09er was an insult? Yep. Now 09er is an OG's. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you're basically you're you're in the Hall of Fame now if you're an O Niner. <laughs> like you you're the old man or old woman <laughs> or old person of your group. Dude, yeah, Tekken like, Tekken Two's ten years old now too. My God. Yeah. G Willikers. G Willikers, Steve. Man, it's it's been a it's been a wild it, ride. It, it has been a wild ride. Um it continues to be a wild ride because we've got so many things going on. Mm-hmm. First of all, do we have, I need to know, do we have any Europeans in the chat right now? Do we have anyone from Europe? I'm kidding. I'm not from Europe. Who we got? Anybody? Do we have at least one European? Anybody? Anybody? Nope, looks like we don't have any Europeans in our chat, Steve. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming we have fo- at least one European listener. <laughs> I, I would, or watcher. See, because I had... I was, I was bringing you news on Twitter the, these past few days. I was breaking down the whole situation with a group of top European Street Fighter players uh, breaking away to form their own Street Fighter League. And there's like a very limited group of people who would get that joke. Well, a limited crossover between fighting game fans who follow me and soccer slash football fans who follow me. There's like maybe five people in chat that would be all over that. So, I, I you know, it just the numbers weren't there for me to pull it out this ep- this episode. But I would have sold it. I would have sold the hell out of it. Do you know? You know that? Uh, did you see what's been happening today with it? Makes yeah, it even funnier. Yeah, it's crazy. It's make it, it makes it even funnier. <laughs> Man, rest in peace, European so- Super League, uh, twenty twenty one to twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one to four hours, or maybe a little <laughs> bit more than twenty four hours, but <laughs> April eighteenth to April twentieth. <laughs> April eighteenth and a half. <laughs> Uh, pour one yeah, out. Pour one out for Jose Mourinho, the only, <laughs> only person in the history of the Super League to get fired. <laughs> That's kind of sad to hear because I like the guy. Well, Sle- I mean, I like Sleeping Master talking about XFL. XFL 2.0 was actually good. The first version was garbage. If you saw the version in 2000, uh, where they were trying, where they were trying to run it like with wrestling storylines like that was terrible this was a legitimate football league and i'm sad it got s- screwed over wait with it's over wait didn't weren't they wait now wasn't the xfl the 
the league that had like Twitch stuff happening to it. Like people could like give teams power ups and stuff. Or am I no. thinking of a different league? You're you're thinking of a different league. Okay, um, what league I am I thinking of? Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up. And I know Steve, you're looking something up too. So I'm just saying these words to make sure that there's no awkward dead air. You know. But I I, I don't know. Anyway, let while you're doing that, um, there is some sad news about uh things being canceled and being screwed over by the pandemic. Um, this is something that got brought up earlier. A month or two ago, we got official confirmation from Jabali earlier this week. CEO 2021 is not happening. Uh, This was, obviously you talked about it uh, a couple weeks ago, asking about the possibility of running an event in December. And that is still potentially on the table. Uh, So CEO in June Definitely not happening. Officially not happening. Uh, There is still the possibility that there would be some sort of CEO revival or CEO uh, ascension. Something along those lines. uh, Offline event to be run in Orlando in December at uh, uh, the original, uh, at the venue where they run CEO Taku and CEO Dreamland. Uh, I forget the name of it, um, but it's the one in Orlando proper. Uh, They are on the books to return to uh, Daytona Beach in 2022 uh, for CEO in June. So one more year off for CEO. Obviously, CEO is canceled. Combo Breakers is canceled. Uh, Evo is still going to be online. Uh, So we're still looking at possibly... Um, possibly still uh, Climax of Night as the first major offline tournament of after the start of the pandemic. And that's the not, Wyndham. Yeah, and that's not the coming Wyndham. until 2020 or November, rather. Right? Was that yeah? The date? Yeah. But I don't. I don't so. think that's a bad thing, though. You know, like we're still like trying to get everybody vaccinated. And trying to get everything under control. So I don't see that as a bad... I mean, it sucks, but I don't see it as a bad thing. I'm hoping to get vaccinated within the next week. Yeah. Um, as of Saturday, I, I'm i fully vaccinated. As, or as of this coming, coming Saturday, Saturday or? I will be... Okay. I'll, it will be two weeks after my second shot. So you can call me Modern Elon, because I got the Moderna inside me. Uh, also, by the way, the... I'm going to gloss over what I just said. Uh, the football the football thing I was thinking of is called FCF, fan-controlled football. Check that out. I, I saw, cool. like, a highlight of that, and that was really weird. But, I thought it was cool. That's a neat idea. Yeah, I, I mean, it was cool. I'm glad people are are getting into it, but it was, it, it, it was a little different for my taste. But, you know, I have yeah. weird tastes. Speaking of uh, people with very specific tastes, uh, there were some people who were very pleased this past week. Why is that? With a uh, with the release of a certain trailer. Oh, is it the trailer I have set up right now? For it could be. Is it for King of Fighters? Yes. Okay. So let's uh, take a look at who is the newest character coming to King of Fighters fifteen. I wonder who it can be. Yes, people were very excited over this. But yes, Shermy uh, is in SNK, or excuse me, King of Fighters 15. People were really, really excited about this uh, because they liked the character or uh, her gameplay. Mm. There were people who were really, really excited about this uh, for... Reasons other than gameplay, which, you know, is a separate conversation. But, yeah, Shermy is back in the fold for King of Fighters 15. Sorry for punching my microphone. Uh, <laughs> I punched my microphone. Don't get any funny ideas here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she she's a grappler. She looks fun. Can't wait for that game to come out. <laughs> I say that every time I see a trailer for it. 
And this is a discussion Trippy and I had. It's like, all right, another trailer for King of Fighters. When can we get to play the game? Who knows? Uh, you'll get it at some point. Um, yeah. I think maybe I'm just salty that they released their trailers on Wednesday and not Tuesday. Well, it gives you it gives you plenty of time to marinate on it, to figure out the proper take. If if you want to get super angry about something, you've got six days to sort of plan your mode of attack for this. Um, plan your mode of attack. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but man, yeah, sure me and my in back to back weeks. Uh, there, there are be, some people who are very happy about that. Is it going to be like Team Big or something? Is that what's about to happen? <laughs> God, no. First of all, you can't narrow that down to three. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you've, got, you've got plenty of options for that third team member right there. It's going to be, uh, uh, what's that dude's name? Iron Ironheart? Oh, God. No, 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 Xanadu. Xanadu. That's what I was thinking of. I hope Xanadu no. is the third member of Team Big Oh, no. They're going to uh, get the big guy from Karnov's Revenge. Balloon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that would be that's how he comes in on the trailer. <laughs> I, I, I want them to bring him in and then just play it completely straight. Like, sex him up to the gills. Ha, like, don't even, like, tongue-in-cheek it. Just, like, treat him as if he were a scantily clad, beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. And just go with it. Please, I am begging you. I want to live in a world where that's a thing. I just want to see it. I wish I, knew, I wish I knew more about KOF. Uh, but we have a uh, Laid Dragon. It's probably the worst way I could have pronounced your name. I'm sorry for butchering it. Uh, saying that since Shermi and Yashiro are in, that means Chris will be back too. I don't even know who Chris is. So that's exciting. I think. Okay. Uh, so, so what, which country are you from again? Me? Yeah. Which country am I? F well, I was born in Brazil. Originally? Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you don't follow KOF? You're upsetting some people. Look, man, here's the, here's, I'm going to tell you the situation. First of all, I told you I grew up in Mortal Kombat 2 on the Genesis. All right. Second, yes. the only other fighting game that I had access to was a copy of, and I kid you not, Rainbow Edition uh, that they had at, they had an arcade cabinet at this place that I went for swimming lessons. And it had Rainbow Edition on it. And every time after finishing with swimming lessons, my dad'd be like, "Ah, oh, I'm gonna go have a, I'm gonna go sit down at the place for food. Here's a quarter." I'd be like, "Sick, I'm gonna go do a flash kick with Guile." I'm kidding, I didn't know how to do a flash kick with Guile, but I used to just uh, mash out stuff with Guile, and sometimes I'd get a sonic boom, and then it would follow the person, or it would follow the opponent even if they jumped up and down. <laughs> so I was like, "This game's sick." <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, that, that's yeah, the that's, that's the got. original homing move. Mm -hmm. Forget Tekken. Forget <laughs> Tekken. Speaking of, oh yes, speaking, speaking of forgetting, of, Tekken. my set game is on point today. You should be hosting the show, not me. I mean, you kind of are, to be honest, which is good. <laughs> uh, so, uh, there have been a lot of players who have been getting the ban hammer on Tekken recently. Uh and nobody really knows why. However, it can all be tied down. It can all connects. It all connects. It, there's always a connection. Remember from my sleuthing segments. There's always a connection. A lot of players have been getting banned from online games and temporarily suspended for online games. Uh, mostly because they've, they played Lydia early. They went into the online mode with Lydia a little early. And they're, they're getting a slap on the wrist. They can't play for like a month. So, and also because a lot of people have been playing with uh, bots that automatically low parry stuff and other forms of cheating. So, a lot of people have been getting banned. Uh, and I say banned, I, what I mean is suspended, not actually banned. Although, I'm assuming there's probably been some people who have been banned. 
Um, and I, we've been seeing a lot of those uh, messages from the online mode that's like, you've been suspended from play until April 27th. Get out of here. So it's, uh, uh, as Aeris would say, it's Harada's finger coming in and slapping people away. So, yeah, shout outs to 313 Win Street Gang. <laughs> And whenever you beat them, they leave. Screw those guys. Uh, those like, wins are all legitimate. Every single last one of them. How dare you besmirch the name of Cax Blaster? <laughs> I am making more Cax Blaster references <laughs> this year than I ever thought I would. Is that a bad thing? I, I Probably. Like, mm. I don't even know why I'm doing it. I don't, I don't know either, but I appreciate them. Uh, but yeah, no, so it's, it's one of those things where we were getting, like, the Street Fighter V, early Street Fighter V symptoms in Tekken, where you see people with, like, 300 wins, uh, win streak, and then you beat them, and they just miraculously lose their connection. And then the game doesn't count. Sad times. Uh, and there's also been a lot of, you know, other cheating, and some people were playing Lydia early. So I think... Bandai Namco, or whoever it is that handles the online version of Tekken, uh, whether they outsourced it or not, I'm not 100% sure, uh, have been coming down with some, uh, some consequences for the cheater in. So, big ups to Tekken. I think all games need a, an anti-cheat, you know? Who was the person who did the, the cheating in, uh, in Street Fighter V, who had, like, the giant uh, Ryu, the tiny Abigail? Remember what I'm talking about? I remember what you're talking about. I forget. I completely yeah. forget. But anyway, stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, so a lot of people have been getting suspended and banned. And it's tied to their Steam account, too. Which means if they really wanted to, they can just make another Steam account and buy the game again. Which a lot of people do tend to do, which is kind of sad. But, you know. Or maybe it's good for Bandai Namco. I don't know. They keep buying the game. Here's my question, though. Things like this. And we, we've, we've had this conversation about, you know, should games move to PC? Uh, as Should fighting games use PC as the lead platform? Um, I know a lot of that conversation has been focused on uh, sponsorship opportunities. You know, obviously there are more of them when you're talking about PC versus uh, console. Uh, but... Uh, that came up again this past week because uh, originally uh, Sony announced that they were going to shut down the store for um, for the PlayStation 3, PSP, and PS Vita. Mm -hmm. um, and they reversed track on... Or, it was today uh, or yesterday. Yeah, they reversed track on PSP, uh, PS3 and PS Vita. So, whenever you have something like that, you have the question of, well, are we able going to be able to play games in the future? Are we able to, you know, we can bust out if we really want to a Super Nintendo and a copy of Street Fighter uh, 2. Why we would want to do that, I don't know, but the point is we can. Mm-hmm. That might not be an option for some of these PS3 games down the line if we're talking about five, ten years uh, mm -hmm. and servers shut down. Marvel vs. So, Capcom 2 Origins? Yeah. So, you know, is there... And a lot of these games, some of them even require an online connection mm -hmm. to play to verify things. And if you can't get that because the server shut down then that could cause problems if, if you're talking about a game that requires DLC use or anything like that. So the question is, do things like this with uh, the cheating in Tekken and other games, which you know it is prevalent in all platforms, but especially prevalent on PC, does that derail the push to move fighting games to PC? Do you think it has a major impact on that? No, and here's why. When we're talking about moving fighting games to the PC, we're talking about uh, we're talking about the competitive scene, right? And we're talking about what well, I I think this discussion is mostly tied to offline events, 
right? Uh, am I wrong about that? Yeah. yeah. I am wrong about that? No, I'm kidding. Uh, I think you meant the other thing. Uh, but from an offline perspective, that doesn't matter, right? Because you're having the game, you boot up Steam or whatever, you start playing it. However, with... These uh, with the Switch to PC, it's what Sleepy Master just said in the chat. It's tied down to economics, and it's tied down to actually customs too. Like we're or not, uh, I think like I want to use the term vernacular, but vernacular is not necessarily the correct term because vernacular is for language. However, the quote unquote cultural vernacular of the FGC when it comes to cons or when it comes to playing it offline is consoles, right? Because at the end of the day, consoles. Plug it in, click the game, game plays. PC, it's a little bit different. You have to turn it on, you have to open up a program, and then you have to uh, make sure that everything is working. You have to build the correct PCs, you have to have the right parts, things can go awry in more ways than one, which can also happen to consoles. However, consoles tend to be A, cheaper, and B, reliable in the sense that you're not going to get the graphics card of a PlayStation 4 to burn out because you overclocked it or something, right? So it's it's tricky. Especially, you know, I always I always like going back to when Wednesday Night Fights had the Alienware sponsorship and they started playing uh Ultra, Ultra on PC and all the troubles and the trials and tribulations that they went through where you know you had to restart the game when you plugged in a new computer or a new controller some controllers didn't work uh yeah. you know so it's and gra- and there, pros and cons that that was a street fighter problem that wasn't necessarily a pc problem no because there are some games that handle that those sorts of situations far better yeah uh than street fighter did in that case right very true but I think my point still remains, right? It's unless there is like unless an entity like Capcom for the CPT or like Tekken for the Tekken World Tour is sponsored by a computer pr- uh, company that then causes them to basically standardize which PC they use and how they use it for all tournaments and then te- and, and have them provide those PCs for those tournaments. I think until that happens, it's a lot it makes a lot more financial and logical sense to stick with consoles on the offline spectrum. Yeah. Especially since, you know, mo- when you're talking about tournaments, most of these big tournaments the consoles are supplied by companies like uh Oh, I forget the name, but gaming Uh, generation, gaming generation. Yep. That sort of thing. And those are are leases, right? Those are basically rentals. Am I wrong about that? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Gaming generation owns the consoles. They come in like, okay, we need, we need 60 PS fours. We need 20 Xbox ones. We need 20 switches and they bring them in and they set them up and you know, if if one breaks, it's a it's pretty easy to go to a GameStop, or obviously right now because of the PS5 shortage issues, not as much. But you could go to a GameStop. You can go to a That's you know cool. any sort of game or or big box real t- retailer, pick one up and replace it. Not quite as easy to do with PC. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that is a big big. Uh, detriment because you know when we're talking about uh events there aren't that many esports events that deal with that sheer number of systems you know there are certainly ones that that have as many systems as you might find at an ncr or an scr but we have far more events that are at that number number of consoles simply because it's a one-on-one game where we have hundreds if not thousands of players in tournaments so the needs for those you know the the demands we have are are so high right now in terms of figuring out how to 
how a PC solution would work in that environment. So I think that's just that's just part of the reality we have to face. Mm-hmm. So uh, there may be ways to get around that. There may be a company that says, you know what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, you know, here are the minimum specs. Here are all the PCs that will work with that. You know, and, and, and someone may throw it down, but I think it's going to take a big concerted effort to make that happen. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's too far from reality, to be honest. But it's one of those things where until we have somebody who steps into the fray, like an Alienware, to step in for a giant major and find the best way to do it, and, and that is both best for whoever the company is that's sponsoring it and for us as players, until that happens, I think it's going to be a far, a far-reaching thing. Steve? We're about 10 minutes out. I'm sorry, eight minutes out from the end of the show. And I think there's one more thing I wanted to talk about before we say goodnight. Uh, and if you have anything that, if you wanted to talk about anything else afterwards, we still have time to do that. But uh, it came out today via Giuna, who is the, the, uh, the keeper of the translations over to uh, between us and the uh, Japanese side of things. Because uh, there was a giant tweet by the Arxis, uh Guilty Gear Strive account in Japan. It was all in Japanese. I unfortunately do not read Japanese. I wish I could. Uh, but Yuna gave us a translation, and it was in regards to their location tests for Guilty Gear Strive. Uh, and unfortunately, it is kind of a uh, bummer piece of news, because uh, due to COVID, they are going to be scaling down the number of location tests. But uh, the tweet from... Juna is, uh, due to corona concerns, the GGST arcade look tests got cut down to just two arcades in the less populated parts of Japan. Good decision. Just got to pray there are some tech monsters out there posting up the changes. Now, it's cool that they can still find a way of doing the tests. It's sad that we don't get, or that they don't get, the uh, experience of the full tests like we've done like they've done in the past uh and it's sad that we won't see as many people get their hands on the game so we won't get to see crazy tech coming out of arcades however hopefully with the introduction of all these vaccines and hopefully we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel for the corona uh hopefully that's not too far away from them having the full tests out for everybody what do you think My big takeaway is it still feels weird talking about this transition back to something approaching normal life again. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to get back to that point. Uh, But, you know, it's it's been such a year plus that, you know, we 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 imagine how we have how life has gone and then everything changes and we've gone through so many different ways some good some bad of trying to adjust to you know this this new reality um and you know there's always that bit of news that says hey we're getting back to normal we're 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 eating at restaurants again we're 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 gathering in stadiums to watch wrestlemania uh by the way bianca that was an incredible match but anyway (laughs) <laughs> but then there's this there's always that bit of reality that sets back in like oh yeah we've still got this massive pandemic that we're you know even though we're we're we see some light at the end of the tunnel we still got to deal with it mm-hmm. and it's always weird to see something get caught as you know something like a location test get caught with that um you know, in, in the grand se- scheme of things, it's a small thing to lose. But it just sort of sucks that it, you know, it's going to make it a little harder for Arxis because this means less information they can gather. Hopefully it's still good information and they can still make good balance decisions based off of it and um, still get valuable feedback, but... Obviously, it's less than ideal. Not yeah. as bad as they got hit with uh, with uh, Grand Blue, though. Mm-hmm. 
Because that Dang. game, I would love to live in the alternative universe. Well, first of all, not just because there'd be no COVID, but I would love to see how Grand Blue would do if it got a full offline tournament season and if it hadn't launched just as the world was falling apart. Yeah. Man. Although, I think if it had decent netcode, maybe. Although, granted, like that's one of those things where nobody was accounting for you know, the impending doom that this virus would bring. Um, but yeah, uh, and I mean, look, we live in an era where we had the open beta test for Blaze, or for Guilty Gear. Wow, did I almost just say Blaze Blue? I think I had Grand Blue in my mind, and I said Blaze Blue. Uh, are, you sure, are you sure you're talking about Blaze Green? Blaze Green. Because <laughs> a lot of people are playing that today. Yep. <laughs> that is true. Uh, also, you know what? I'm really it, it, sad And if about... you're going to play... Oh, go ahead. I, I was going to say, if you're going to play, play responsibly. Play you responsibly, know, for sure. Not everyone wants to play that game with you. You know, if if, if, if you want to find some people to play with, great. <laughs> Just do so responsibly. That's all I'm going to say. For sure. Uh, the other thing I'm upset about is today was supposed to be Doge Day for Dogecoin. And that was a bust. Nothing happened. It went down 10 cents. Uh, however, I will say that my earnings are still stupidly high for me making a dumb decision last year. So, hooray for past me. <laughs> I still don't understand crypto. Uh, so, I'm like, going to get to that. Where can you spend Dogecoin? You can Is buy... Just purely... You can go to a Dallas Mavericks game and buy a ticket in Dogecoin. Are you serious? Yes. Uh, however, there's something even more serious before we get to that, and that's Die by Sword gifting a <laughs> sub to 420 Blaze It. <laughs> Thank you, Die by Sword, gifting 138 <laughs> subs. <laughs> Welcome back, Die by Sword. Oh, my God. We're very happy you're here. <laughs> the Die by Sword gift sub has been one of the greatest contributions that we have ever had on this show. Absolutely. Like, I agree. Always uh, always finds the exact account to Oh my goodness. Welcome back, Die by Sword. It's good to see you again. Uh any any last thoughts before we say goodnight before I do the outro? Because it is seven twenty nine. I'm, I'm still tripping over the fact that you can actually use Dogecoin to buy yeah. Dallas Mavericks tickets. And uh, Newegg announced today that you can use Dogecoins to purchase stuff on Newegg. Mm. And supposedly Teslas are going to start accepting Dogecoin in the near future too. So. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, if people can buy things with it, cool. But Yeah. Look, uh, uh, last year Elon spent $100 in Dogecoin and said, ha ha, look, I bought a meme. Uh, I now have my assets in Dogecoin are now $2,500. <laughs> <laughs> It's stupid, I know. Bravo, bravo. If it reaches Bitcoin prices, I'm going to be a billionaire, and I'm going to buy Best of Five. Let's so, be honest. You could probably buy Best of Five for like 40 bucks. Probably, but that's okay. I, I don't really have a high value here. <laughs> I'm going to the moon. That's right. Take me to the moon. I was hoping today was going to be the day we went to the moon, but Doge Day was a bust. Sad times. Um... I think did we miss anything? I think we got everything right. We we got everything we probably deserve to get. So yeah, I think okay. we should uh, wrap it up. Okay, then, ladies and gents. Oh, Blue said Eustace came out yesterday for Grand Blue versus. Speaking of, I didn't know that. Rip okay, so we missed one thing. We yeah. missed one thing. I'm yeah. sorry. Um. Yeah. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there. Well, we'll have more, uh... Yeah, Q-Ball, we covered Ryu and Chun-Li in Power Rangers last week. Catch up, will ya? Jeez. Trying to backseat <laughs> host the show here. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, but, uh, anyway. A new... Okay, oh, we know there's a new KOF trailer tomorrow. We talked about... Alright, chat's getting on my nerves. I love you all. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us for this week's episode of Best of Five. I have been Elon... There's my info right up there. This has been the main squeeze, 
the Steve Ace King Offsuit Jurek. Follow him on Twitter at Ace King Offsuit. Master of and I will schedules. have a schedule. Uh, I'll have a full schedule for the uh, uh, World Serpent Champion out later this week. So, word. Uh, so that's been it for us today. So thank you everybody for joining us. We'll be back next week with more shenanigans, more best of five, more trying our best to talk about fighting games. <laughs> but that's it for us. We'll talk to you all next week. Good night, Canada.